And all this sort of swooping about has become very popular and was much in evidence in a lot of the work exhibited at the 1987 Imaginer Conference, which was part of the Monte Carlo Television Festival. Well, that was a first prize winner from the Imagina Forum in the scientific category. And with me to have a look at some of the other entries is Martin Lambinane, designer of some of the best known animations on British television. Martin, what did you think to that animation there? I think it's terrific actually because it's a sensible use of computers. Um, if you ever want to, uh, if you want to uh, say to a client, this is what we're going to build, and the best thing is to build it, and that's what they've done. They built it on a computer, and, and in particular here they've uh, put it in the actual place it's going to go, in the right environment. And that's particularly difficult, actually, mixing live action with computer animation. Well, of course, computers are quite good at dealing with geometric shapes, aren't yes, they? Yes, they're very, you know, that's their best thing, really. And so that's why uh, um, architecture is often um, used with computers. Well, you use computer animation for the Channel 4 logo, mm -hmm. and you also used it for this one. It's a lovely piece of work. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, a mild cigar. <laughs> Great. Tell me how you did it. Well, of course, it was a piece of computer animation, but unlike uh, uh, other jobs we had tackled, this had to be funny. Now, up to that point, nobody had made a funny computer graphic sequence. Uh, and so we turned to traditional animation. And we got the whole job animated by hand uh, and then made into a line test. And then we took that along to the computer house and said, copy that. And the result of that was we got much more fluid movement, we got action, uh, acting out of it, and we got character out of it. That's why it's funny. Would you like to take us through developing an advert, for example, using computer animation techniques? Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, you start with the script, and you start with something like this, the storyboard. This one was for a Honeywell commercial that we did. Uh, and they asked us to produce them a, a commercial that looked as if it had been made by computers. <laughs> so, first thing we had to do is... Uh, characters. And we had three cracks at it. This was the first crack. We needed a boss character in it and, and a secretary, but this is the boss character. Uh, they regarded this as being far too pretty, far too designed. So we went away. This was too ugly. <laughs> <laughs> this they regarded as being in the right area. So we determined our characters. That's the first thing we do. Now it'd be very nice to be able to just point a camera at all this and put it into the computer that way, but no, life isn't like that, I'm afraid. You have to do working drawings. And there were 15 of these working drawings. Uh, this is the character with all its elevations. That's and the businessman with this amazing suit. That's right, yes. It sadly never got there in the end. It was never used. But all these coordinates are then fed into the computer by the computer operator, our computer animator. So, once that's in, we then have to uh, get things to act. Uh, and again, we went back to traditional animation, or traditional animator, and got him to work with a computer animator. And together, they solved all the problems. So the result of it was that you got a piece of acting, you got a performance, not just a series of wooden figures walking well, around. We actually have a copy of that advert, so perhaps we could have a look at that and see what the end product really looked like. If you had a Honeywell automated office, it would eat up paperwork. And increase secretarial efficiency. It sends messages faster than Concord and talks to other computers anywhere. Your business could be much more productive with office automation when it's designed well, built well, honey well. 
Very nice. Well, you're a commercial designer, obviously used to work in limitations of budget and how much money you can spend, but at Imagine, a lot of the things were actually done as research projects. And we've got one here, which is really rather nice. It's a piece of material, and it's to follow it as it's lifted up by the corners and yeah. shaken, and, and as it's hung over various objects. It's actually mathematically working out the lines of each of the threads and then contouring between the two of them. It's very realistic. What do you think of it? I think, I think it's a wonderful piece of research. And it's an uh, amazingly clever piece of work. In fact, I could have used that very thing two months ago, I must say, on a, on a, on a commercial for a soap powder that we were um, involved in. But we had to, in the end, use a model because there was no way of doing it. But I'm very interested to see that. Yes, it's, it's very nice. Look at it shaking. And this is a rather nice piece of computer graphics where the movements are very realistic. Yes, this is a really difficult problem. Um, computer animators for a long time have been trying to solve this. This is to be viewed purely as a piece of research. And it's, it's about the weight being distributed on the body and making it look heavy and solid. Heaven knows what it's pulling. <laughs> it's strange that. Yeah. Look at that jump. Very realistic. But again, we have a job that, uh, that we need to do which is going to need that kind of research. Well, John Lasseter was a, a young designer, a young graphics designer at, at Disney, and he was very successful at Imaginary, in fact. This is one that's quite nice. It actually shows a bee, and he brought for the... This was done in 1984, as a matter of fact, but it brought into some of the techniques he'd used in Disney where he blurs the actual image on a computer to make it look as if it's moving extremely fast. Well, here's a technique that's used sensibly. I mean, you need those wings to, to flap, and that's the way to do it. But, uh, it's a charming piece of work. Well, that won the overall third prize, and it's full of Walt Disney techniques. But John Lester also won the first prize with an amazing piece of film. And we actually have some of his working drawings actually as they were run live on the computer itself. And you can see this is the original character, this angle poise lamp. Yes, right. You see he's sort of developing the character. Here we have just the angle poise lamp. Those um, are the movements he can make at that right. point. That's right. But now we start to see it become a character. That's to, you know, that's really It terrific. feels heavy and it feels yes. very weighty, that's doesn't right. it? Now, now he's got to put a story and develop those characters. And uh, we actually have a, a clip from the, from the final winning entry. It really is a super piece of graphics. A lot of humanity and that's difficult to believe it was generated entirely by computers yes absolutely but that's great that's a good point about it i mean who cares what it's generated by it's an absolutely wonderful film it gets my prize too <laughs> well that's virtually it for this week there are notes for the whole series which you can get by sending a large stamped addressed envelope to the following address it's broadcasting support services p.o box 7 london w3 6xj that's bss p.o box 7 London W3 6XJ, but please remember to enclose 75p. Till next week, then, goodbye. Bye.